Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome back to the Troubleshooting Series. Today we are going to work with Mercury and I'm going to share with you my top five remedies for Mercury energy. Now where have we been in this series? We have covered so much ground, haven't we? We've had a look at the outer three planets, Saturn, Jupiter, Mars. We came to the Earth. We had a look at the Moon revolving around the Earth. We've had a look at Venus. We're in the inner rim now. And now we're here with Mercury before we get to the Sun. Okay, and Mercury of all the planets is the fastest moving, right? It revolves closest to the Sun. It's got the shortest path around the Sun. It's 88 days. And the one thing you will notice about Mercury is that it's quick. It's fast, isn't it? So what I'm going to do in this episode is I'm going to frequently look up at my little time indicator there and I'm going to see if I can get this episode done in 10 minutes, 10 to 20 minutes. I have no idea. I'm going to do my very best. So to honor Mercury, let's get straight in. Now, what if your Mercury is too strong? Okay. I will give you some examples of what this looks like in real life. As an astrologer, of course, when I look at your Mercury, I'm looking at all kinds of different things and I'm looking at it across divisional charts. I'm looking at Shadbala, I'm looking at Ishtakashvala, I'm looking at so many different things. I, I could go on, right? Ashtakavarga, there's a lot I look at. But, and by the way, in the comments, a lot of you have said, how should I assess if my planet is too strong or too weak? I think what we might do is we might do an episode just on that. That would be a really good topic to cover. So if you want to hear that kind of thing, let me know in the comments below. Uh, but yeah, you know, I mean, I've got some examples here. Mercury too strong. Example, Ketu in Virgo. Okay, Ketu in Gemini. Mercury in Virgo. You know, all, all these kind of things um, I, it could be a strong Mercury, but equally, you will see a strong Mercury just in everyday life through these symptoms. So if a person is very quick-witted and very funny, okay, very humorous, funny, quick-witted, you'll see this British TV shows are so great at this. There's a TV show I watch sometimes and it's got this guy Lee Mack. He's very fast. He's the fastest of all the comedians. Robin Williams was always very fast too. And that, one day I want to do something like an episode looking at comedians and stuff like that. We'll do all of that. But if your Mercury is too strong, you will be very quick-witted. You'll be fast. You'll be funny. Okay. These are the people who make great salesmen. They've got words on the tip of their tongue, at the top of their head. They've got words coming out of them all the time, right? They're clever with words. Uh, another thing about Mercury being too strong is that these people get bored very quickly. Okay, so the boredom sets in fast with these people. Another thing is that they're competitive. They love to compete. You know, I think competitive energy gets them going. It, it motivates them. And I have another couple here as well. I know I, I'm, I'm limiting myself to three, but there are another couple. There's perfectionism as well. These people are also very detail oriented. So they love fine detail. And you'll see writers and craftspeople, graphic designers, you know, graphic designers are a classic for Mercury because they've got to be pixel perfect. And they will worry at night if the file has gone out and it's one pixel out, they will worry about that. As I say in a chart, you know, we're looking at things like Ketu in Virgo, Ketu in Gemini. Uh, your Ketu position can indicate this for sure. Mercury in Virgo, okay, it's a really strong placement there. How about if your Mercury is weak? This is a really interesting one because as I was contemplating the weak Mercury, I realized that of all the planets, this is the best one to have in the worst shape. Okay, so if your Mercury is in bad shape, right, and that could be something like, um, and I've got the example here, for example, Mercury in Pisces, uh, Mercury conjunct other planets, you know, Mercury tends to imitate the other planets, so Mercury can be kind of a bit confused, who do I imitate now, you know, so Mercury uh, combust, things like that, you know, Mercury is often combust. Right. So sometimes people worry about these things. They think, oh, no, does that mean that, you know, I'm I'm not very smart or something? No, not at all. Because if Mercury is in bad shape, and I'll give you an example. Albert Einstein. Let's bring up his chart. I've got his chart up on my screen here and you can see that it is debilitated. 
And yes, it does benefit from Nietzsche Bhanga Raj Yoga. It is a very good Mercury in that regard, but some authors will say that a debilitated planet is always debilitated. Doesn't matter what yogas are on there. You know, it's, it's some authors will say and, and astrologers will say that that's a problem planet. Uh, I tend to disagree with that. I never get put off by debilitation. And if anything, I think there's something to a debilitation that is making the life exciting or interesting in some way. And I want to explore that. I want to figure that out when I look at a chart. So we've got here, you know, Albert Einstein, debilitated Mercury, right? Uh, and what are the symptoms of a weak Mercury? Well, look at that, good imagination. You know, and I'm sure Einstein's the one who has some great imagination quotes. Was he the one who said, uh, logic will take you from A to B, but imagination will take you everywhere? I'll find out and I'll put the right quote by my side, but these people with a weak Mercury got a great imagination. Another thing is that they have faith. You know, they're able to trust in something other than their own mind, okay? They know that there's more to this life than just logic and their thoughts and the mind. You know, they know that there's more out there. These people are also more able to go with the flow, okay? They are possibly more intuitive. They're able to, it, it is, it's about trusting, isn't it? And you know, an intuitive person has to trust, right? So I do think that a weak Mercury is actually the best planet. If it's in bad shape, that's the best planet to have in bad shape. I also think uh, Venus debilitated, and I will cover that in an upcoming Masters episode. I've said that in the Venus episode as well, I think. Venus is also okay if it's in bad shape too. I've got some things to share about that. But shall we take a look at the top tips? Okay, how are we doing on time? Well, seven minutes, I'm gonna to have to hurry. Top tip number one, draw the line. Okay, draw the line, what do I mean by this? Mercury is brilliant at drawing the line, drawing a boundary, but I'm actually thinking of this concept, specifically in terms of forgiveness. And what I would say here in this top tip number one is that get really good at forgiving because forgiving is, and this comes up with Mercury because Mercury rules a very social house, right? The third house there. Now it rules the sixth house as well where, and that's Virgo. And at times you will feel like a bit of a loner down there in Virgo, right? But over there in Gemini in the third house, it's a social place. And when it comes to relationships, it's so important to forgive another person. And it's always two way. You know, I, I always think that um, with forgiveness, you know, you might think you've been wronged, but you might need to ask for forgiveness as well. And just ask, you know, and, and forgiveness is initiated through the asking. You have to ask, ask the person, will you forgive me? Can we move past this? Can we draw a line under the sand, you know? And I have the note here, forgiveness is the oil that makes the machine of friendship smooth. It's necessary. We need to forgive and we need to be forgiven as well. And if that's not possible, uh, you know, sometimes we can't forgive. And in, in those instances, just recognize <clears throat> that, you know, say, for example, the person's cross, crossed over or whatever it is. We have to recognize that this is a mystical process and, you know, and that, that we're all eternal beings. So even if the soul goes somewhere else, we can still ask for forgiveness. And, I, you know, in those instances, it usually comes very easily. So, uh, yeah, forgiveness is so important. You wouldn't think I'd bring forgiveness up with Mercury, would you? But look at that. This, this one came up as top tip one. All right, let's take a look at top tip number two. Call it out. Right, what are we calling out? Okay, this is calling out some form of injustice. And this is classic Mercury territory. Mercury loves to call out an injustice. You know, that's a, that's a real function of this house. A lot of great lawyers come out of the house of Virgo. Okay, come out of that sixth house. Great lawyers come out of there. They've got a real talent for it. They've got a talent for calling things out.
I also have the note here, look forward to being called out. Now that is a classic part of the spiritual path and it's a really important one. I'll give you an example. I had a friend, this was some time ago, many, many, many years ago, probably about 20 years ago, who asked me for my forgiveness. And I thought about it because no one had ever asked me for that before in my whole life. And I thought about it for a good couple of days, I think, and then I, I thought, yeah, I should. I really should. I spoke to my mum and she said, yeah, you should forgive. I thought, okay, great, I'll forgive. And um, so I did, I did forgive. But then this person, after a few weeks, identified that I hadn't really forgiven and that I was still actually treating him badly. So he called it out and he said, look, you clearly, you haven't forgiven me. You really haven't done it. And either you forgive me or we just call it quits. You know, we forget about this whole thing. And I thought, wow, okay, and I'm on the receiving end of that finger pointing. This is that calling it out. You know, when someone calls you out and you're like, whoa, and there's that, oh my God, <laughs> kind of moment. And you're taken aback. But I, I leaned in and I thought, yeah, no, he's right. I haven't forgiven properly. And he was very right to call me out. And he called me up, explained, you haven't forgiven properly. And then I did, I, I did forgive properly. And then the relationship went so well. And I learned something very powerful about forgiveness, you know, and you may have to call someone out if, if you're trying the forgiveness thing, but it's not quite working. You might have to, to call it out and, and point out that, hey, this could, you know, we, we need to get to a better place. So that these are all mercurial kind of things. Isn't that amazing? Top tip three, don't test people. We're at the 12 minute mark, okay. Don't test people. This is a classic. This is very mercurial. Mercurial people will test you. They'll test you even on trivial things like, oh, do you know that song? Or where's that from? Or I don't know, they're always testing somehow. So they love to test other people. I have to note here, they're testing people's love, their knowledge, their boundaries, right? Now, a bit of this can be fun but too much can be downright annoying. So don't test people. If you test people a lot, become aware of it and see that that might be something you might wanna do a bit less of if you're very strongly mercurial, okay? Top tip four. Now I'm calling this one modify your social circle, or something like that. And what I wanna say here is that sometimes we're expanding our circle of friends, we're making new friends, and sometimes in life we are saying goodbye to old friends or we're, you know, trying to evolve or move forward or meet more like-minded people. And sometimes that involves saying goodbye to people who aren't compatible with us anymore. And, you know, that is going to be a Mercury function. Mercury will help you critically take a look at your social circle and see who's right and, and who's not and, and, and who's going to be there with you where you want to go kind of thing so this is there's some sun energy here as well the visionary thing is here too as i was looking at all of this the sun did come up quite a bit in my studies of mercury yeah things like uh pride letting go of pride that's another one you know, and that's a sun thing though, to let go of pride, you know, and, and you'll experience more love in your life. But we could see some of that here too in this tip as well. But yeah, I think Mercury can be quite discriminating and that's a good function. You do want to look critically at the people around you and things like that. I've got the note here, sometimes logic and common sense are needed more than the heart. Now the moon would disagree. The moon would probably start crying if I said that, right? But here in the Mercury episode, we can modify the social circle, right? And top tip five, think out loud. How are we doing? Oh, 15 minutes. All right, I'll be really quick here. Think out loud. This tip actually comes to me from my dad who gave me this advice. When I was studying technology, he said, 
because I used to work hard and try and do well and all that kind of thing. Anyway, he would see me stressed out and he would say, look, he's like, I don't know anything about technology, but you come and talk to me. And as you're talking to me, whatever problems you're having figuring, because I was trying to figure out how to do this or that and I couldn't and I didn't have anyone I could ask and it was frustrating. So he would say to me, talk to me and in the talking, you'll figure out everything. And one of the things he told me was, talk to the walls. And apparently that was what his, uh, when he was at university, somebody, some tutor he had, or uh, there's a special name for them, but he had somebody who told him when he was a young man that just talk to the walls. And in, and in the talking process, everything will become clear and you will understand your subject even better. And this is kind of re reminding me of Richard Feynman, one of the most brilliant teachers ever. And he says that if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, then you don't know your subject well enough. So that's very much what this top tip is about. Think out loud. The other thing is that we've got Venus as the Lord of the second house of speech. Okay, and we've got Mercury as the Lord of the third, third house. And third house is speech too. It's communication. It's all of that. These two come together to make the artist combination and they are brilliant at stylishly expressing things and getting thoughts out there they work really well together so if you're ever stuck about anything talk to the walls talk or just talk in your mind I talk in my mind a lot <laughs> and uh, yeah that 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 helps me but guys, I'm going to leave it there. This ended up being a longer video than I thought, but at least it's not the 20 minute mark. Let me know how you got on in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. All the comments have been amazing, guys. And especially there was one about, I think, um, satin stone. And you'd said that you wanted to have your stone. You wanted it to have flaws in there. Me too. I feel the exact same. I, when I get my satin stone, it will have flaws. It absolutely will. All right. Well, thank you so much for tuning in, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you next time.